Hey, what's up, Zach here. And you know, I hear a lot these days that you know people say, you know, when a player gets their first signature shoe, it's not gonna be of flagship quality. The materials aren't gonna be at the level of the flagships. And they're gonna wait and see how the line does. And then they'll start to give that player kind of the better and better and better shoes. However, if the Sabrina One is not a flagship level Nike shoe, let alone one of its very best, you know, potentially at the top of its line, I'm not sure what is. Let's get into them. Now the Sabrina One is packed full of just super intuitive features and the uppers are no exception to that. If you look at the lace line and how it goes into the toe box, it is just this really strong paneling with stitched reinforcements going all the way from the back of the lace line all the way into the forefoot and around the other side gives it a tremendous lockdown, but it, even more than just that really just tough paneling, you get a lace line that is pretty wide in the forefoot and then goes really proximal into the ankle. I haven't seen a shoe recently where you can get such a proximal tie down on the ankle, and that really does well for people that like to put a big runner's knot in there or just wanna get a really crazy lockdown, because if you put a runner's knot in these two back eyelets, this thing will cinch around your ankle so well, just give you such an intimate contact there between your ankle as well as the ankle collar of the shoe. But then right adjacent to that really rugged stitched paneling, you have this TPU meshing where if you look at it under the microscope, it's really cool. You've got these really thick bars of TPU coming down and then thinner strands kind of intersecting with them. So you're getting a little bit of strength as well as kind of that micro meshing that gives the shoe just a lot more flexibility and it's kind of ease of use. But right under that TPU weave are reinforcements of the lace line going all the way into the strobe board. And what's great about that is you're the flexibility and breathability of that TPU, but also with those strands going into the strobe board, you're getting a ridiculously strong tie down, even if it is crossing over a weaker part of the shoe. And if you look at the breathing capabilities of the Sabrina One, they heated up 116.1 degrees, cooled down in their 53.2 degrees, which was pretty surprising because, you know, the tongue is pretty aggressively gusseted. There's padding that goes all the way from the toe box all the way into the midfoot. There's really no areas of minimalism on the undercarriage of the uppers, the ankle collar is really densely padded. So, you know, when I had these on outdoors, once again, in the mid nineties, air temperature, core temperature, much higher than that. My feet didn't really start getting pretty hot until about an hour that I was out there. And at that point, my whole body was heating up like crazy. It's kind of hard not to. So I, mean, I would say on the breathability scale, in terms of you are putting these outdoors on a pretty hot day, they'll still be pretty good. But I think what's even more impressive is the upper durability profile. If you look at the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, it, the burr bear Barely made an impression on the uppers. I actually went and just cranked the burr on it for a couple seconds afterwards just to see what it would do because it really didn't show any wear. And even with me cranking the burr on it, it still did not get through the stitching layer of that paneling. So it is a a pretty darn stout panel, not just to lateral containment, right, and side to side stability, but also to like aggressive abrasion. So if you're a slider or dragger, especially on indoor courts, these are gonna be just fine. But getting into what is undoubtedly my favorite part of the Sabrina one was the midsole. Now on the midsole teardown, you get a double thick shank, much like what was on Kyrie Irving's like actual player exclusive shoe I cut open. I'll link that down in the description below where I actually got one of his like game worn shoes. This one has the same one, which is awesome. Now you need that because it is a full bed of React foam. And although React foam is super plush and comfortable, you kind of need something pretty stiff to hold it up because it can bottom if you don't have that. There is a very wafer thin zoom area in the forefoot, which I actually think works really well for this setup of a shoe. I know some people complain about when Nike puts thin zoom air units in shoes and I'm right there with you. I don't like it in some models either. However, in this instance, when it's encased in that React foam, it's a low stack shoe. It really does give you a nice combination of feel in the forefoot, but also some resilience. And looking at this midsole setup on the bounce height test, got 33 and a half centimeters in the rear foot, 44 and a half centimeters in the forefoot. So even though it is thin zoom air unit, it still has got a lot of tension. It still gives you a little bit of pop. However, with, with how this midsole is set up with the stack heights there, as well as just the choice of midsole foam, this shoe really is more meant to accommodate force, you know, a little more of a shock absorbing type setup, as well as more of a shock accommodating setup, which we'll talk about in the playability section. And getting into the outsole tread, it is a continuous tread pattern from proximal to distal. However, from, you know, medium 
medial to lateral. It is three panels wide. Now that central panel is dyed rubber. Then you get this like semi translucent rubber uh, on the medial as well as lateral side. Now, what I like about this is it's kind of like a, a large, you know, undulating herringbone. So you're getting kind of the best properties of a wave pattern as well as some of the best properties of herringbone. Now, I will say these things have such an aggressive outsole based lateral flange. Keeps the shoe pretty streamlined in the uppers, which we talked about in the fifth section, uh, but it does give the shoe incredible side to side stability with how thick of a slab of rubber they put for the flange of the shoe. And the best thing the shoe's got going for it in terms of grip is that it is a full length tread pattern. And also because there is pretty wide margins between the cutouts of herringbone. So, you know, it takes about five, 10 minutes for the rubber to get up to temperature on an indoor court. After that, the grip is pretty good. On outdoor courts, it's good right off the jump. And also, like I said, because there is some pretty wide gaps here between the herringbone and certain parts of the shoe, uh, it will grip slick outdoor courts, really gritty outdoor courts, rubber. And you know, the forefoot isn't the best for a carpet court, but um, it, it's not the worst either. And speaking of that grip, if you look at the speed ratio of the Sabrina ones, comes in at a 2.76, which I think is pretty representative of the shoe. It's not the most lightning fast shoe out there. However, it goes from low speed to high speed so quickly. It also, for a streamlined shoe, has some of the best side to side speed I've seen recently. And it also just transitions step so well for a shoe that is a full length tread pattern. Usually in a full length pattern, you're either getting like, you know, grip, and stability or you know you're getting a shoe that has you know really fast characteristics whereas the sabrina one kind of melds both the best characteristics of a pretty quick shoe but also a pretty side to side stable shoe and on the outsole durability test 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper i mean yeah about a millimeter of damage on the dyed rubber as well as a semi-translucent rubber it does both feel like a pretty soft compound of rubber um, so if you are taking these outside they might start to wear down pretty quick cover on an indoor court uh, because because like I said, it is full length. It is sharing, you know, the frictional amongst a pretty wide area should be okay. And looking at the fit of the Sabrina ones, I mean, yeah, it, it's pretty streamlined shoe, especially with the really proximal lace eyelet here, which I love, but it definitely can make the shoe be pretty conforming. Now, if you're a narrow or medium foot and you can go true to size, if you're a medium foot and want just a little bit more of a roomy feel, I probably would be considering going up a half size. A 2E foot, if you want a one-to-one -one performance fit, I just try to break them in at one half size up. If you got longer toes, I think you can go a full size. If you are a 4E, it's, it's gonna be a pretty tough break in for you. Uh, I would say though, for the snake bitten foot, if you are someone that wants a more minimalist shoe, especially, you know, in the, in the foam stack of the shoe, so you can feel the ground in a little bit better, but also to, you know, protect the heel, protect the arch and give a little bit of forgiveness under the ball of the foot. I think this might be like the shoe of the year that combines the more low to the ground, kind of real prowling type feel, but also it is pretty easy, you know, on your foot and, and on your joints because of that, that full better react foam as well as that, that double thick shank. Um, you can definitely fit an orthotic in there. It'll lock in really well. So I think you can augment these and make them feel pretty good, but also on their own for, for what they are, they are pretty darn good for someone that has some bumps and bruises. But what makes the Sabrina one such a phenomenal shoe is its playability. Now I touched on this before and I was talking about its shock accommodation and being different than shock absorption. Now when you get a shoe like the Sabrina, one, which just gives you incredible tactile sensation on the ground, incredible feel. You know, it, it just feels like it's an extension of your foot, right? A lot of times those shoes, when you put a lot of force, especially side to side, you're making a really hard step back. You're trying to make a really hard side to side cut. The shoe just will buckle on you, just folds like a lawn chair. And so, it, you know, a lot of times people are, don't want to go with that kind of shoe because yeah, it gives you great feel, but it, it also might just crumble underneath of you. The Sabrina one gives you all of that feel, but then all of that support too, that double thick shank. And I didn't even mention this in the teardown, but the ridiculously thick heel counter, just like in the Luca twos. And what that does is, especially with that really soft react foam in the heel, it, it's so when you're you know making a really hard cut and you're turning in, the shoe just doesn't internally rotate into oblivion. And what I noticed about the Sabrina ones more than any other shoe is the feeling I had when I was coming down on my heel or I was taking stride on it. Even more than some shoes with zoom air in them, the heel was so comfortable, especially when I was kind of coming under the hoop, turning and kind of landing backwards on my heels. Number one, super smooth transition, but a super soft landing. And usually when you get those soft landings on a shoe, that means the shoe is just kind of overall soft. 
Whereas in these, no, you are getting pretty stout support underneath your foot. So I, I think that's what makes these just so phenomenal. You're getting that, that just really intimate contact with the ground, but also pretty rugged containment. Now the one thing the Sabrina one doesn't have is a real diving board effect when you're going up to the rim. It, it does not launch like a rocket ship, like, you know, like the GT Jump, GT Jump 2 does. However, it, it's really not meant for that. Like I said, it's really more meant for a ground assault. So if you're someone that, you know, number one can kind of bring the footwork to the shoe, it's gonna give you all the feel in the world. And if you're someone that wants to outwork somebody else with footwork, it's gonna be a great companion. And, and I think with, you know, with some signature shoes versus others, you know, why are some good, what, why are some not? I, I think in this case, I'm guessing there was a very good open dialogue of exactly what she wanted from the shoe, exactly what she wanted this thing to do and a designer that was you know, probably listening to a lot of feedback. And you could just tell a, a lot of work was put into this shoe and a lot of just thoughtful additions were put into the shoe. So um, it, it is very nice to see, especially on a debut signature shoe, how darn good these things are. So I would love to hear your comments down below. If you're looking to pick up a pair of these, you know, if the profile of them kind of fits your game, let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna see the other sibling to the Sabrina One, another shoe that just came out on the market, the Nike Zoom Freak 5 going to the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam, especially a full better react. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.